Two spur drive center. If you have really big, really wet wood, you can use this, but put that perpendicular to the grain. If you put it parallel to the grain, it will just wedge and split the wood apart. So always, even with a four prong drive center, put the prongs so that no prong lines up with the grain. Just make that a habit. Because it's possible you could get a weak, like in that magnolia right there. You see how big the grain lines are? If that wood were dry when it's turning, it may wedge the, the grain apart and you lose the piece. When would you use a two prong as a, a four prong? <coughs> well, I bought it because I'm sorry I got to do it. I've used it once. So you always I use have, a four prong? I, I do. I have found that I could, this, this one prong, I mean, I've, I've had this thing for 12 years now. And I sharpen it up every now and then. That's the most versatile thing that I've got. For if I take, even when I'm doing bowl turning, uh, I start out with the, the wood blank, whether it's partially round or chainsaw off the corners. I put it like this in the headstock, and so I did my live center the tailstock, and that way I can adjust this end if I need to. Because you remember, if you, you put it on there and you rotate it, and you see where the bark is here and the bark is here, and and you may have to change the foot to do that. Now at the top part, if you're doing naturalized bowl, you got to line these two up the best. You may have to move the top end. So if you use something like this, you can. If you got a face plate, you got what you got. Um, if you're just using a jam chunk, you got what you got. So I start everything between centers. Everything I do starts between centers. And always with a four prong drive spur. Okay. That's what I, I do too. I use it uh, two prong spur. I used to use it more. And when I had a four jaw or four spur um, drive center like that, the smaller one. Um, on on light woods like like maple and stuff, it could tend to drill mm -hmm. more, and so I went to a two spur one, which you can drive in farther and it really hangs in there. But what I've tended to, I got a bigger four jaw or uh, four uh, spur one, um, and I use that more um, just because it was better. <laughs> Not that big. <laughs> <laughs> if you drill this one in, yeah. But you know, and I did that for a while too. That, that's why I say I used it once. That's a little facetious, but not much. I did it for the same reason because I was getting the drill in. I found that as I learned to sharpen, as I learned to back off the push of my cut, even when I'm roughing from a chainsaw piece, it doesn't it doesn't ream out nearly as much. And if you drill the little pilot hole first, yeah, I, 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 I find it, it I find it depends on the wood you're using. Yeah. All right. We didn't talk about the glue chuck using hot melt glue. Now, don't use the, the glue that you get in the sewing center. That stuff just doesn't have enough purchasing power. Go to the hardware store and buy the glue sticks in a hardware store, Home Depot or somewhere. They got, they got more, more home to them. And it doesn't work on wet wood, but you take... How big a piece could you use that for? Oh, as big as you want. I've seen professionals turn 16, 18 inch diameter with it and they swear about it. You have about a 40% purchase or 30% purchase on that? Um, or what? I don't know. I don't use it much. Again, I saw a guy do it, so I just went and bought a little cheap standard. That was the one cheap purchase I made. Um, but you put it on the piece, you have to marry the two up pretty quickly. And it'll do when sometimes when nothing else will work. You'll find today, you ask me, <coughs> Tina, when how you decide. Some days your normal stuff just doesn't work and you don't know why. Doesn't work, try something else. I, I, you know, there's no magic to it. But you would you would take a, a face plate with a block of wood on it, you put the, the glue either here or on the foot of your piece, one or the other, put it between the, the tail stock with the appropriate size cover, push it up while the glue's still hot, marry it together, let it sit until the glue hardens. And then you can pull your life center away. If you do enough, you learn what will hold and what will break apart. And a lot of people put one more bead around it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. People do that. Now, with the one way, you also get the bigger cone. So that's another way for the jam chunk. So I can take this end off, and I can either put that in a bigger opening piece, like this. And now that rotates freely because it's on the ball bearing center. Or, you can turn it around, it'll mount like this. So if you're doing spindle turning, this won't do it. You can, you can have a live center, you can have a, a jam chuck like that, that goes inside that big cone. 
just another metal clip. That is a really nice live center. Yeah. Um, now, with, Dan's not here, he was going to talk about production turning. But this step center, the reason these are good for production turning, especially for spindle turning, is you've got that, like you said, the, the point in the end that's spring loaded. And if you do enough of these, What you can do is, if you already have your centers all marked and you're good enough at this, you can have this set up because you're, you're doing production turning. You're going to turn a hundred somethings, right? You have it set up so that you take this, that's spinning, you never turn the lathe off. You put that in the little hole that you've got, you crank this thing in, now you know, mine goes a lot faster. You, you push it in until these teeth grab and then you let it go and it's spinning. Then you crank this down. You turn it, all you have to do then is put your hand like this, take it off, take another one, stick it right back in. You never turn the lathe off because you'd be amazed if you're making a hundred spindle somethings in a day, how much time you spend with that on and off button, waiting for this thing to ramp up and ramp down. All right? I did it with bottle stoppers and some other stuff. So that's the main advantage of this. The other part is if you're spindle turning and using a skew and you're not real good with the skew yet, all right, you're heavy handed, you get a lot of catches. If you get a catch with this, those teeth will just sort of rein themselves out, but the thing doesn't go fly at all, like it would if it were in a, a, a chuck of some sort. All right, so this is really good for spindle work. I don't use it for anything else. You can, but I don't. It's also good for multi-axis, because instead of having okay. only four teeth to catch, you have more. All right, four, This is your normal um, Jacobs. Jacob's chuck, right? It's like in a drill press, and the, the teeth are pointed like that. If you're going to turn something where you hold it in here, it's going to crush the fibers. So Craft Supply took a bunch of those, and they drilled the teeth off, so it's round inside. This is made for 3 8 inch dowels. If you're turning uh, bottle stoppers, it's a standard 3 8 inch dowel that goes through the center. Kids, tops. It's really good for that, so that you put it in here, when you take it off, it, it doesn't crush the fibers that you now have to cut off. Sometimes, using the regular Jacobs chuck, it'll crush the fibers and things will snap and split. You don't have to do that. What you can do is spend a whole lot more money <laughs> and buy a set of collet chucks. And Chuck, you have some collet chucks in yours only, they're homemade, right? I have a... Uh... I don't know if I thought of that. Isn't that what this is? Well, yeah, I've got that. But I was just wondering if I had my 1970s college chuck. I have a picture of it. Okay. These are college chucks that I've made that I just drill out to what I want to hold. Put it through the bandsaw. Put it in the long jaws. The long jaws just crush that. Do a wonderful job of holding it. So mm -hmm. that's inch and a quarter for the inch and a quarter aluminum that I was using to make handles. You make all those you need for virtually nothing, and usually to grip them, you use a pipe clamp or something, right? A band clamp. Well, I use... Not a pipe clamp, but a band. It fits right into these long yeah, jaws. Okay, if you got the long jaws. So if you don't have the long jaws, then you can't. Yeah. yeah. Then you have that... Uh, you don't want to come out the, the band clamp or some character screw. Yeah. Post clamp. You can use that. Uh, that'll, that'll squeeze that down a little bit. Or, like I said, this one has different size inserts. This one's 3 inch for bottle stoppers and kids' tops. Um, and this just goes on and off. You don't have to think. All you have to think about is how much money you just spent. All right. Uh, this is called a dead center. It's dead because nothing rotates. This is or a cup, cup drive was the older name for it. This is how you used to drive all the wood before they came out with the spur drives, especially spindle turning. Because again, if you get a catch, that'll just spin in the wood, and because that sharp edge is still stuck inside the wood, it's not going to go flying off. Uh, but if you're going to use these to drive with, or if you put them in a tailstock, you have to put wax on them so the wood doesn't burn and smoke. So, but they have their purpose, and if you're doing a lot of really delicate turnings, these are a good drive center. Right. Because you don't get the heavy catches. Um, this is just a Jacobs chuck made to, uh, with no key. 
these things are worth their weight in gold. I would advise you if you're going to buy a Jacob's truck, go ahead and buy one of these. And forget about these signs that you have to put the key in. <laughs> because there's no way to hold the key here like you do with a drill. And you never have, they're all different sizes. You get this one, your hands are always the same size, so it'll always work for you. <laughs> Alright, uh, face plates. Now, I don't know why. Let me show you this one. It's got eight holes in it. It's got eight screws in it. If there's eight holes, put eight screws. I don't care how big, how little, how heavy, how soft the wood. Eight holes, eight screws. Some of them have four holes. Drill some more holes. That's the best answer. All right, because four holes just isn't enough, especially if you're turning wet wood. If you're turning dry wood, it's probably pretty expensive. You probably don't want to waste all of that thickness of wood right there in dry wood because that's pretty damn expensive stuff. This just came out of the burn pot, so I don't care how much I'm going to waste. So, eight holes, eight screws. How, how long are those screws? Now? How far in do you take them? Into well, I, you know, when I first started, I went to McFeely, and the other thing is uh, sheet metal screws, not wood screws. Not drywall screws, sheet metal screws, and preferably uh, square drive. Okay, like McFeely sells a lot. Of, everybody sells square drive screws. All that means is that you don't have a Phillips head, you don't have a slotted, you don't have the star. You have a square driver head, and I use a, a an impact cordless drill. And this thing, I can put screws in with one hand in the wet wood, inch and a half, number ten screws. Use as long as a, a long as long a screw as you can is the right advice. As long as you can, if it'll take an inch and a half screw, if you got enough wood, put eight number eight or number ten inch and a half screws with a square. Mm -hmm. These what are mean, probably what inch and quarters and number eights. What do you mean no wood screws? What, sorry? Do, you, what do you mean by no? Don't wood use the, the wood screw. They don't have enough. Um, the threads aren't deep enough in the wrong angle. They don't grip the wood. They don't suck the wood in as tight, and they're more fragile. Wood screws are like normally brass or something. They will break off when you try to torque them down. The thread isn't all the way to the end yeah. by the cap, too. There are several things. We're talking about a wood screw because you're looking like you don't. Mm, it, not. it may be just an expression here. When we talk about a wood screw here, you got your cap. <laughs> Then, then there's no threads yeah. here, and then you get threads down here. Right. How's that for a That's the typical wood screw. Yeah. That's a typical wood screw. Right. Now, and and a sheet metal screw, screw is going to be. Chuck's going to have threads. Can't see through you. Okay. Huh. <laughs> 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 Some can. <laughs> Some can. <laughs> Some can. Okay. Well, if you look through his ears, you can, but he's too tall for that. Now, that, yeah. that's the main reason. The other part is these threads are not nearly as aggressive as sheet metal <coughs> screw threads are. They're not as deep. And they don't have the same profile and stuff. So yeah. a sheet metal screw has much more purchasing power, purchase power, than a wood screw release. Mm -hmm. yeah, you may get lucky. The, yeah, I was going to say, I think the sheet metal screw is pretty much cylindrical except at the point. Right. And the wood screws are all tapered. So yeah. if they lose a little bit, you've lost your grip. Yeah, OK. Some of us have already lost our grip. Well, that's, uh, well what about Thanks, the John. pocket hole screws that they use for that Craig? Like those, I use those. They seem to work pretty good. They've got a big Are they a sheet metal screws? They're spaced away pretty far apart. I, I, you know, I don't know. Those are, those are switch screws, screws but I, I don't know whether it would be good for And the thing about it, the, uh, you know, the deck screws or any of those, they're too brittle. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have good profiles on the, on the yeah, chip of thought, but they're just too brittle. Okay. Jam Chuck, I bought this from uh, Alan Lacer. The first demonstration I ever went to when I first started turning was Alan Lacer at the woodworking shows in Tampa. He was selling these. He had a machinist make them. And that's a, I mean, there are names for all these parts. That's just a pulley off of something. Um, the shaft and these are, um, they, they stop vibration in the, in the machinist lathe and stuff. Damper. Damper. Yeah, damper or something. Anyway, he made these. And, and he put the little piece of plywood on the end and this little piece of foam rubber and he gave you some extra foam rubber. <laughs> While you can make your own, this thing has, paid for itself many, many, many times over because I never have to recondition it. I don't have to rebalance it. It goes in the headstock. It's there. And I am ready to jam. And it's because this machine is going to run true no matter what I do. I cannot make that not run true. And it's the number two Morse taper. Right? You can make your own. You can see Alan Laser at the symposium. 
uh, or you can probably order one from it. But that is, um, was one of the wisest purchases I made rather than trying to make it myself. All right, so for the really deep, I do an awful lot of really deep polish ones. Do you have any that are polished already? Here? Yeah. 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 I don't, none of these, you know, the one I just had won't fit inside here. But if I want to turn that foot off, how do I hold it? I, could, I can hold it my jaws this way, but it's probably going to vibrate. I can hold it this way, but I guarantee it's going to vibrate. So I take this and put it in my scroll chuck, put it in the bottom, put the live center until it's balanced. And then if it's doing this, now, usually by this time, all I'm doing is the very foot of this thing. If it's doing this, I just stuff something in here to help fill up the hole so that it won't knock around as much. But again, light touch, it's just, just a piece of two by four or two by two. I keep those all the time. A piece of sandpaper glued to the end to help give it a little bit of driving friction. And that just goes back in the drawer. I use it maybe twice a year. Okay. And we've gone through now. Rubber Chucky. This guy came to the Florida Symposium. And he sort of saved their bacon when craft supply backed out at the last minute. So the guy makes these, and it's a chuck, and it's made out of rubber, and therefore rubber chucky, right? And he just takes a piece of all thread rod, and he puts a number two Morse taper on this end. And this lathe didn't long enough for it. But if I have a really deep hollow form, or a really deep base like that, this will go a long way. I've got an extension for it that'll fit on this end to make it longer. And then I've got a shorter piece to make it shorter. And I can either drive, you can do that face I can either drive it like this. If it's bigger around, I stick it inside and drive it in the bottom just like I did that piece of wood. And this rubber has really good purchase. It will grab the wood and spin it and hold it still. Or, You buy these, these little pucks, and then you shape it. You cut it any shape you want to because it's just rubber. So if I had a custom shape, uh, if I want to put a, a step ledge on here, I could do that and hold this thing. If they were bigger, I could cut that step ledge just to fit this. And the next piece a little different, I just turn that to whatever you want to do. Uh, and just keep buying these. They're just threaded, threaded pieces. Florida Gator colors. Go Gators, go Timo. Um, so they come in all different sizes. So that's rubber chucky. And um, is the end of that shaft drilled for a um, a draw bolt? Draw bolt? No. No. End. No. The other end for a quarter inch sanding. For a draw bolt. Draw bolt. Yeah. It is. Uh, it's specifically drilled for the extension. Let me see. Mine's, yeah, okay, mine's it is. With a set screw, right? It is. There's a set screw right there. Yeah. I haven't done that, but you certainly What I do is I put a, um, a one inch um, soft sander in mm -hmm. there with it, you know, the Velcro yeah. with the one inch sanding disc mm -hmm. on it, and screw that part mm -hmm. all the way down. Mm -hmm. So it will hold the top of the uh, vessel, mm -hmm. and the bottom will. That, them out on the sanding desk. That that's he demonstrated that. I just wasn't going to go that far with it because we're out of time. But I what what he's saying, time. what he's saying is, if I want to run this nut all the way down and screw this thing, well, this one is metal, but I could screw this till it comes through. Mm -hmm. So. Now, this was not made to do that way. I'd have to modify that in with the threads. But anyway, you can imagine if you had this mounted way back here. Now, the, the mouth fits up against here. This has the sanding disc. That fits in the very bottom of the base. And that drives it. And this holds that. Remember I was telling you, you take the base and you stuff something in to keep it from doing this? That prevents that. I just I appreciate you bringing that up. I just forgot about that. This thing will hold that deep base rock steady while you've got it in the jam chuck holding it. That's a good point. All right. Uh, and other than my standard one-way faceplate, that's all the toys. Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Tape chuck. 
I had this up, but I didn't talk about it. I've had this thing for seven years, eight years, and I've never done anything with the wood. All I do is, this is double stick tape. Don't buy the cheap, cheap ass tape. Buy the good stuff. Buy it from craft supply or woodcraft somebody. Mm -hmm. This stuff has, you can see, and this has been on here three months. You can see how hard it is to pull off, and it's still got plenty of tack. And this just sits in my, in my studio on the wall. So tape chuck, you can take any of these in a very short order. This, this top of this is, is meant each other. But now, you mount this in there, bring the tailstock up, press it in there hard, let it sit for five minutes, and that tape will grab into it. Pull the tailstock away, now you can do the foot. And it will hold. Trust me, it'll hold. Just have to be careful because you will have tape residue that gets inside your piece. You just have to think about that for you. Right? Thank you. Yay.